ride was so cool. I'm I'm still shaking from the excitement. I can't wait until they find me. That was 20% cooler than anything else I've done. Wait until they see those pictures. since I've landed. That's okay. I knew something like this might happen. They're, they're probably just having trouble seeing me because the corn is really tall. They may not find me for a while. Well, that's why I brought my Game Pony DS. I love playing Tetris. Ten days. Ten days of staring at corn. What we plan for this. They've probably started handing out lost and found posters. I must remember my training. They're still looking for me. I just need to stay strong and stay home and, and beat Tetris. It's been over a month. We knew this could happen, but I never thought it would happen. My Game Pony DS burned out its batteries last week. But hey, that's okay. And that's why I brought my entire Daring Do book collection. I I'm sure they're still looking for me, right? <sighs> Mr. Arduino and I have been talking, and, and he assures me that we should keep our hopes up. And I've gathered together all the hand warmers from inside the capsule and have named them. But they're my friends now, and, and friendship is magic, right? <sighs> Won't somebody find me, please? Wait. What's that rumbling sound? It's getting louder. A and the whole capsule's shaking. It was about 9.15 on Friday morning when I got a phone call that the capsule had been found near Reading, Michigan. When I called the girls to tell them, there was much screaming and dancing around. The next day, November 1st, was a Saturday, so we got in the car and went to pick up Rainbow Dash. We were invited to the home of Kim and Jack Trot. A few days earlier, Jack had been driving the combine through a cornfield and saw a flash of orange. He stopped the combine and discovered a bunch of cords tangled up in the combine and a bright orange package pressed up underneath. Luckily, the capsule itself did not go through the combine and only one corner got chewed up a bit. We excitedly opened it up. There's a little dust and dirt inside. <laughs> and one cor kernel of corn. But otherwise, everything was intact. We let Rainbow Dash get out for a bit of fresh air while we pulled out the SD cards that had our data and photos. We asked the trots if they'd like to see the photos, and they did. So we immediately plugged in the camera's SD card into the laptop. And what we saw, well, it was beautiful. Breathtaking, even. And it was amazing to think that they had come from our camera. I mean, these were the sorts of pictures you'd see only in a book. Now, to be fair, there were a lot of photos that weren't so amazing. Shots of the tarp before launch, blank blue sky, lens flares, and then a lot of photos of corn at the end. Five and a half hours of corn. <laughs> but in between, it in between was spectacular. It totally made the last two years of work worth it. We're not quite done yet. We have lots of new data to analyze now. And I still need to finish the podcast on the capsule construction. But at least we can be confident that the, our capsule construction really worked. Oh yeah. And while we do have a few things yet to do, we'd like to end this podcast on a high note and let you see a bit of Rainbow Dash's debriefing interview. Rainbow Dash, we're so glad to have you back. I'm so glad to be back and, and to be out of that capsule. It's going to take another two months to get the kinks in my wings worked out. Boy, I bet. Can you tell us a little bit a about the launch? Well, I remember the countdown and the liftoff going very smoothly. 
We launched around, around you know, 10, 17 a.m., maybe? I rose very quickly at a rate of around 19 and a half feet per second. It was a beautiful view. But, of course, I'm used to being up this high, you know, being a pegasus and all. Uh-huh. Can you describe what you saw? Well, there were strong winds rocking the capsule, so sometimes all I could see was blue sky and clouds, and other times I could see the land far below. So, so how high did the balloon go? The balloon went up to around 83,244 feet. I officially had reached a whole new level of awesome, the stratosphere. And I have to admit that once I started getting up to the stratosphere, I started seeing some things that I've never seen with my own eyes. I mean, you see photos like this in the movies, but you never expect to see it for yourself. So what happened when the balloon popped? Well, I knew it popped when I started to drop quickly. And that was a little scary at first, but the parachute kicked in and worked like a champ. But unfortunately, sometimes the balloon shreds covered up my view of the descent. But I could see some of my landing. So where did you land? In a cornfield. Yes, we know that. But where was the cornfield? Well, at first I didn't know where I was, because all I could see was corn. But later, after the trots found me, I discovered that I had landed just a little west of Reading, Michigan. Hmm. That was a little northwest of where we thought you had landed. Yeah, there were some pretty good wind gusts. And after we lost radio contact, there must have been some winds that pushed me off course. Well, I'm just glad that we got you back, Rainbow Dash. We hope you enjoyed this podcast. We also want to give a big shout out to all of the people in Reading and Camden, Michigan. You were all so friendly and helpful during the search process. Thank you for your encouragement. And another thank you to all of our friends and family who kept encouraging us to persist throughout the search. Two years ago, we decided to go to the stratosphere. And while we were a little optimistic on the time frame needed, we did complete all of our design goals. It's definitely going to be hard to top that. Well, if we reach orbit, I think that would count. Uh, Dad? Ooh, or maybe the space station. You know, NASA's had toys up in space, but I bet none of them arrived in their own personal spacecraft. <sighs> Please excuse my dad. He still has his head in the clouds. See you later.